Hi, I'm Scott, and today we're going to talk about the Sunseeker L22 Plus robot mower from Wild Badger Power on Dad It Yourself. Hey guys, welcome to my backyard. And it's springtime, and I'm starting to bring the lawn back. And this year I'm trying something new. And what it is, is that robot lawnmower right there from Sunseeker. Okay, so what I have right here is the Sunseeker L22 robot mower from Wild Badger Power. And full disclosure, they did send this to me free of charge. I've been trying it out for about a month on this yard. I have not run a standard mower in this yard, just the robot. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job. Um, I followed the instructions for setting it up. And we'll talk about that in a second. And I'm going to show you what I did right and what I did wrong. And hopefully if you think about getting a robot mower, you will not make the mistakes I did and you'll have a successful campaign with your robot mower. So let's get into that. I wanna show you some of the features of this robot mower. Um, right off the bat, we have the height adjustment here and it goes from 40 all the way up to 80 millimeters. You have an automatic stop button and a digital control panel where you can control the start the home, the power. This is where you enter your pin and you can do uh, different kind of controls through this as well. In the front we have the ultrasonic eyes and what these do is detect objects or obstacles in front of the mower and turn it off. And then you have an LED headlight here that tells you the charging status and it glows white while it's actually driving. Bottom of the mower you have two unidirectional wheels, you have knobby tires, and these provide great traction up to 21 degrees of incline. You have the turning blade with three replaceable blades. And this is also a self-retracting blade. So as this thing, if it goes off of kilter or stuff, this blade will pull up so that it doesn't start cutting into the edge of a concrete or something like that. And then right up front, you have your charging port right here. So the robot only weighs about 24 pounds. That's 11 kilograms for those metric folks out there. It has a rain sensor in it so that if your sprinklers come on or it starts raining, it will stop mowing and go back to its home station. So one of the other neat features of this robot is if someone comes along and picks it up, it's gonna stop. And that's really good if you've got kids or anything. And then it's gonna sit there in an error mode until someone comes along and resets it. So it won't start back up if there's a kid screwing around with it. So if you can see here, I've got the perimeter wire right around the lawn. The first mistake I made is I didn't mow the lawn short enough so that the wire got a good ground contact. And if you can see it here, it's actually a little loose. And as the grass is growing, it's pushing it up. I put the stakes in, there's one right here another one right here. These are about, I don't know, a foot, foot and a half apart. Um, there's plenty of sticks. I've got enough. I could put these things every six inches if I wanted. But as you can see in some areas, it's kind of come up a little bit and it's gotten loose with the temperature. Like right now, that's way too loose. I have to put some tension on that. And this is why that's a problem. So as you come along the perimeter wire, you'll see right here, I have a break. And what happened is this area got too loose and it got up high and the mower whoosh, sliced right through it. And the moment that happens, the mower just stops where it's at, goes offline and waits for you to figure out that it's offline. So I have to splice that back together. So if you look right here, I had that happen before and I used a little crimp connector to actually splice that wire back together. And it worked fine until I cut it again. Before I repair the cut in the perimeter wire, I wanted to show you how there's another indication that there's a cut somewhere. You'll see this is flashing red. So when that happens, I see the mower in the yard or I have a flashing red light. That tells me I have damage to the perimeter wire somewhere. So I walk around until I find that damage. And now that I've made the repair, you can see right here that I have a solid green. All right, now we're gonna fix the second issue with the line. Well, you know it's already loose, but if you look here, see how tall the grass is here? 
and all along here, that means my wire is not close enough to the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this wire up, move it a little bit closer to the edge so that as the mower goes along and comes in, that it'll get a better chance of actually cutting the grass along the edge. So another mistake I made is this corner. The robot does not like sharp 90 degree corners. So I'm gonna come over here and then cut a 45 and then get closer over here and come down the side of the yard. All of the perimeter wire has been relayed. As you can see, I'm only about three to five inches from the edge now. And there's definitely a line where the perimeter wire is. And I'm really not a fan of that, as you can see down here. And what you probably saw over here, I was using my little edging tool right there. What I did is I cut a groove right down here all the way along here and I just push the wire down into the groove. It's not like buried in the ground, it's just down in the groove below the grass blade surface. Now disclaimer, it is not in the instructions that you can bury this wire, but I'm going to use this as a test bed. Um, I'm getting a green light over here so I know I have a connection, but I don't know if the mower is going to be able to sense it. But it's really only about an inch lower than it normally is. Uh, I'm going to reach out to the manufacturer and see what they say about burying the cable. And I'll put the answer to that in the pin post to this video so we can get an answer. So that's all done. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the location of the home base. So if you look at the instructions, it's very specific on how to put the home base, either in a corner or along a wall like they show in here. Well, for me, I would have to put it kind of right here on the lawn. I can't put it in that corner, which would be nice, except for there's a sprinkler head right there. Uh, so I'd have to disable that sprinkler head to put it there. Uh, my power is way over there. So this thing comes with a huge cord, it's probably 25 feet long. And I just have it kind of looped over and plug it into here. So what I did is the wire comes in, kind of makes an outside loop and then turns in. When the robot returns to the base, it always comes from this direction. So in my yard, that's a counterclockwise direction. And it has a little bit of a problem, but it does make this turn. It takes it two, maybe three times, but eventually it gets into the base station. So that works, but that's against installation recommendations. But like I said, it does work for me. So the other thing I learned about this is how often to mow, when to mow, and at what level to mow. Um, it comes standard five days a week for eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. And what I found that was way too much mowing. And what happened is as it was mowing, and let me back up so you guys can kind of see this. My yard's a big rectangle pretty much. And what was happening, it was going off into that corner and coming back and then bouncing and going into that corner and then bouncing and going back into that corner. So it was matting the grass down in this direction and then in this direction and then towards this corner as well. And you can kind of see how the grass is all folded over right here. So what I had to do is reduce my mowing 
to three days a week for about four hours a day. And this whole area, my whole lawn can be mowed by that mower in about three hours. So no big deal. So you can already see by replacing the wire, I'm getting a better edge from the mower. Well, it seems like the order wire is working just fine buried along this edge and the mower had no issues climbing up onto the edge of the patio, which is the only place in my whole yard where the hardscape is actually above the grade of the lawn. But it's cruising along just fine. So I have multiple lawns. I have this big lawn here, the side lawn, sorry about my neighbor talking. And then around the front of my house, I have another small patch on the other side of the driveway and the backyard, obviously. And what the manufacturer suggests is if you have multiple lawns that you wanna mow, just dig a tunnel or if you have access like somewhere over here, I could build like a pathway by cutting a hole in the fence or digging a tunnel under here and then bringing the loop across the landscape bed and then around this lawn and then it would get this front lawn. My challenge would be it'd have to cross the sidewalk here and I can't access the other side of the lawn on the other side of the driveway because there's a rock bed unless I wanted this thing to drive down through the rocks which would be again just entailing putting the wire loop in so that it has a path to follow. Uh, I didn't take that option. I still mow my front yard because I like the lines and I like the way it looks and it is the front facing part of my house and the curb appeal. So let's talk about edging a little bit. And what I learned about edging, as you can see, it's long here because my wire was too far out from the edge. The mower comes in from this direction and it wants to just hit. Well, when it's done, it finds the nearest wire and then it moves counterclockwise around the yard until it gets back to the base and it edges that edge. Well, if it decides to get done, say over here, it's only gonna edge this portion of the lawn. Fortunately, there's a function on the mower where you can push a button and tell it to edge and it will just follow the wire around the complete circumference and then go right back to the base again. So like I said earlier, this thing will keep mowing until the battery gets low and it will go back to its home base by going counterclockwise. Well, if you get done with it and you don't want it to keep going, what you do is you can just walk over, push the stop button like that. It will go idle and then just push the home button and it'll go home. Should go home. Let's try that again. Here it goes. Maybe not. There it goes. It turned around and it's going to return counterclockwise all the way to the base. And in my yard, that takes about three minutes. This thing is not fast, but it is thorough. And as you can see, it's getting that edging in as best as it can based on where I put the wire. Now let's talk about avoidance. So as you can see, it just hit my tripod, but it did see it. And what it does, is it has two eyes right on top of it. They kind of look like headlights, but it uses an ultrasonic beam and just shoots out in front. And if it sees something, it stops and it turns around. Um, when you first set up this mower, if the lawn is too high, then it'll keep seeing those high grasses and stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. But eventually it'll get through it. And what they do is recommend going into the app and turning off that function on that first tall mow. So the robot comes with an app and you can personalize it to yourself. And as you can see, I'm all logged in already and I've renamed my lawn mower. And once you tap on it, you can start working, you can tell it to do edge, you can stop it from working and return home. It has a map function. Mine is currently not mapping the yard right now for some reason. Uh, in the settings, you can do all kinds of things. This is an internet of things 
So it is uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. You can use it with your Alexa, Google Play, or other home control device. Um, automatic firmware updating, time zones, changing your headlight settings. Uh, we talked about the ultrasound settings. You can set that here. Your rain delays, all kinds of different parameters you can do in this app. It's really good. Some of you may have noticed on my video the white line on the back of the mower and that was a little bit of bird dropping, but that brings up a great point. This thing is water resistant and you can just rinse it off and you should on a regular basis. Keep all those grass clippings off. So I'm really happy with how this came out and I still would have to use my string trimmer to clean up the edges and my edger, but I would do that with a regular mower anyways. So the time savings of actually having just run the mower is huge for me. So let's see how this thing goes. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this robot mower, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. If I've done anything in this video or any of my other videos that you've found helpful, please consider giving me a super thanks or becoming a channel member. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. The subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.